For most of us, a building only comes to life when it is filled with people. When it catches the sun or casts a shadow. When it collectively forms a skyline. But who are the people who shape our world through these structures? The people who can look at a piece of dirt and see the infinite possibilities. Those who absorb its challenges knowing that with creativity and focus, they can take an idea and make it real, create buildings more intelligently. Through the company he formed and the foundation he created, very few did this better than Charles Panko. He was uh, a very charismatic character, but very down to earth. Relentless, relentless in the pursuit of finding better ways to build. He had a way of kind of pinning you down and asking things that uh, were quite challenging. After all, he built a company uh, from scratch based on his own principles. There aren't many people like we were in those days that were willing to take these kind of uh, risks. Fueled by a love of building, Charles Panko shaped a new vision of the engineer as builder through entrepreneurial creativity, lifelong curiosity, and focus. This is the Charles Panko legacy. Looking for a builder to build them a quality project, and all we have to do as a builder, working with the designers, is give the owner the best possible product. We take on very difficult projects. The projects that come to us, come to us because of that. We just simply seem to be doing things better than our competition. We were the first ones to introduce uh, mechanized gang forms. We were using uh, slip forms when no one else on the island was doing that. We were using precast in innovative ways. And it was just the fact that you were part of a company that wasn't accepting what the industry norms were, but we were trying to constantly break the mold. The Panco way is to establish trust with the client and work together as a true team every step of the way. It is that culture that served as the genesis of design build. Panco's secret is to practice design build not just as a delivery system, but rather from a cultural perspective. In design build, the promise of the engineer as the creator and shaper of buildings is fulfilled. Charlie, I think, uh, realized that the builder can bring a lot more to the table in terms of finding better ways to build that building, better ways to design that building by an integrated approach. And again, this integrated approach was not discussed. Design build was not uh, a term or a, a cliche at that time. He just felt that the builder does the building, executes the building, should be a part of the design process, whether that's going to be a successful project, whether it's going to be efficient, whether it's going to meet the cost budgets, maybe if it's constructible. And that really wasn't done um, in the 60s. Well, the customer loved the fact that, that uh, all the problems were taken off his back and he had a guaranteed price. That was uh, the sales tool that were really uh, spurred going with its own build and getting people to go along with it. There was less litigation less delays, less change orders. And so the success of design build, the integrated process where the builder would take um, a significant amount of responsibility started to get legs because of its success. This ideology of, of always finding a better way, we all believe in it because making the owner happy is, is what drives us. I mean, they always have challenges and we always want to resolve them for them. Um, collaboration is, is is key on this on any I think any job site and uh, design build helps to facilitate that and I think that separates us from a lot of other general contractors. Good. It is just such an honor to, to work for this company. Being a part of Panco and the design build nature, it's like driving the bus. You can either be a passenger or you could be driving it, and a lot of the times we're driving the bus. I think at Panko you have that opportunity. You have that opportunity to truly be an engineer, truly be an, a builder, truly be an architect, and blend all of them into really what's best about the business. If Charles Panko had a true love, it was for the technical innovations in structures and building methods. Concrete was one of those areas of opportunity. I think that Charlie loved concrete because concrete can be molded into different shapes and sizes, strengths, colors, 
textures. And so concrete had more capability to do different things. Charlie's great perception was that you needed to industrialize the process. You needed to substitute capital investment for the varieties of labor. And that's what gives you rise to precast. That's what gives rise to slip forming. A lot of our executional techniques, we innovated solely as a way to control risk. That whole idea was capital intense up front, known expense, easily controlled, versus Lord knows what's going to happen on any given day with the labor force that you have. After years of in-the-field innovations, the precast hybrid moment frame was PANCO's entry into leading research and development for public benefit. We have a beam and a column connection. When we have a seismic force introduced into the building, we now get a lateral force. And that lateral force causes rotations to occur at the beam column connection. So we kept the stressing on that down so that we had the strength we needed at that joint to take care of the rotation and the shear force. And it could rotate during a seismic event, never elongating that strand more than was necessary or into the inelastic area. So it always returned back to its original position. The building replumbed itself. Our building returns to its original plumb because of this force at this joint. When others said it couldn't be done or that a building couldn't get built, it was Charlie's and ultimately the company's nature to jump in and figure out how it could be done. It can't be done was music to his ears. Mr. Panko, being who he was, achieved incredible amount during his life, but he didn't really want it to add. I mean, it was almost, it was almost like, well, what can I do if I'm not here? And the foundation turns out to be the perfect vehicle for basically perpetual uh, advancement in that area. Charles Panko gave us the ability in perpetuity to make industry breakthroughs with new ideas, more efficient buildings, better tools, and better education. He took his vision for advancing research to the next level, delivering innovation to the marketplace and bringing value to the client. Whether it was improving the way we approach building design through cutting edge technology, testing and retesting the strength of a structure making a greener and safer future, or simply finding a better way to build. Charlie's style was to tell you what your job is and let you do it and get out of the way. He was very concerned about the quality of the people and he paid a lot of attention to that. He empowered the people of the company. He backed the research. That was his attitude great expectations, keep raising the bar. We will be seen as an instrument of change for the ways in which structural engineering and construction technology are done. And I think today, even today, that's how this company operates. Well, we try to find a better way. The Charles Panko Foundation's mission is to advance innovation in building design and construction as to provide the public with buildings of improved quality, efficiency, and value some innovation. They should encourage everyone to think independently and to be innovative and to be constructive. They can be, they can be anything they want to be. They just wake up the brain and go to work.